Today we're beginning a new series called the Legendary Investor Series. Now the first person we'll be covering is Stanley F. Druckenmiller, a legendary investor that over the past 120 quarters has only lost money in five and average on bear markets, his returns are at least 50%. So he is an absolute legend in my opinion. Really what this series is going to focus on is kind of some of the habits, the frameworks and kind of paradigm shifts you could potentially, you know, pick up as Abraham Lincoln says, you know, learn from everybody, even if it's what not to do. So you can kind of simulate how these people have played out their, their whole historical investment career, pick up the, you know, best qualities, maybe test them out, form your own thesis on this, see if this works, have a synthesis then retest all these things to kind of build your own strategy for investing because these are ever-changing times. Yes, you know, when Stanley F. Druckenmiller started, first started investing, it was very, very different macro situation than we have now with this insane monetary stimulus. But just to kick it off, you know, he has actually had a very bearish bias. And this isn't in short term, you know, so many people get caught up in this bubble of like, oh, what's going to happen this week or what's going to happen this month? Anything can happen in the week in this month. This is These are kind of like the, you know, um, What's name? Donald Rumfeld's. It's called the Rumsfeld's Matrix. You know, there there are known knowns. There are known unknowns. Like there's things that you know that you don't know. For example, you know that you probably don't know. I don't know Mandarin or Russian. Maybe you speak those languages, but you know the languages that you can't speak. But if there's a language that you don't know about, that's an unknown unknown. So an unknown unknown are basically like these these things that you don't know that you don't know. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, something that's very interesting because these unknown unknowns are really what's kind of the crux of a lot of investors. These things that they aren't aware of at all. These things that kind of hit them on the blind side. And Stanley F. Druckenmiller really spends a lot of his time researching and reading. You see this with a lot of other legendary investors. Warren Buffett, he spends, a t I think it's like... He, he said he slowed down in his later years and he still spends like eight to 10 hours reading. It's insane. Um, and that's a day. So when you start picking up all these habits and kind of put these together, you go, hmm, okay, so what are the things that really made Stanley F. Drunkard Miller stand out in his time? Well, he was able to take in all this raw data and not be uh, really emotional with it. He was able to be rational and logical about this. In studying the macro economy, studying multiple different investment sectors, he really went for the bond market. And while the bond market may not seem as sexy to some people today when you have uh, things like, oh, you can go trade stocks on Robinhood or go trade cryptocurrency or blah, 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 um, or wholesale flip real estate. But it's, it's interesting to go, okay, let's go back to the basics with bonds. Stanley F. Druckenmiller is kind of a boring investor, some people would call him. But, uh, you know, the people that kind of shy away from this and go, oh, I'm not going to be interested in that. I'm not going to learn about bond investing, those are the people that I think over the long run are really going to pay for it. Because if you don't understand these key frameworks, if you don't understand these kind of foundations, I would say to investing, if you're not reading the best books on the great investors, you're really missing out because you, again, it's these kind of unknown unknowns. You may think that, uh, you know, just because you have your money going crazy up in some cryptocurrency or in Tesla, that you're the smartest person in the world. But Zoom out. That's the key thing. Like every, I would say at least every week, try and zoom out on your charts. If, if you're just looking at, you know, the daily chart or the weekly chart or even the, you know, bi-weekly charts, um, zoom out. Go to the long time horizons. That's really pretty much how I start off any chart is going all, hit, hit the historical, the more of the years, the better in that chart. And really what Stanley Druckenmiller has done, like I said, he's held a bearish bias ever since free money has came into this market. So once we really started having this stimulus at the beginning of the, uh, I would say, I don't want to get demonetized for the video, so I would say the virus situation. How about that? That'll <laughs> maybe save it. But uh, the virus situation, um, once we had that first stimulus package, he's, he's held a bearish bias. And you may go, well, wait a second, but this has gone up. We've, if you look at the, you know, that March crash, where it was an incredible investing opportunity till now, I mean, if he's held a bearish bias, isn't he wrong? But he zooms out. He goes, you know, let's look at not just the United States in this bubble where you're denominating everything in US dollars, which is when, when the base monetary thing that, that you're counting, you know, your the chart is based off of whatever the underlying asset is. So like, let's just take gold, for example, a 2000 year old asset plus gold denominated in dollars. But if you take, you know, the stock market over time denominated in dollars, oh man, that thing's gone up. But if you denominate it in gold, which is something that Stanley, Stanley F. Druckenmiller obviously also is interested in commodities. He's talked about this a lot in the past, gold and silver, uranium, palladium, all these different commodities. When you take the same stock market that you were deriving it in dollars and it looks like it's going up at a right, you know, a 45 degree angle up to the right. When you denominate that same stock market in gold, 
guess what? It's down. So this is the importance of really zooming out and not just like going in with the hype. And I think that's one of the main things that I learned from Stanley F. Druckenmiller. Um, there's things that I don't necessarily agree with him on. You know, he has, uh, this is some things on the personal side, like for example, most of his colleagues go out, he, he says, you know, in, in interviews and in books, most of his colleagues are going out three, three nights a week, but he goes out three events a year. <laughs> so this is, he's obviously more of an introvert than an extrovert. So this is all something where it's like, you know, take the best, leave the rest. So if, if you think that's interesting, I think there's a time and a place for that. Just like, but you have to respect kind of the seasons in life. You know, there's a summer, there's a spring, there's a winter and there's a fall in life. And not just those, those seasons in the year, but in life, you have to think about that. You know, if you're in the winter, it's time to really hunker down, get the work done, kind of prepare for, for the harvest in, you know, the, the fall and the summer. So um, really what, what, one other thing that I would say with Stanley Druckenmiller, um, and maybe I'll do a part two on this, let me know in the comments. But uh, one other thing is he, you know, the way he raises his kids. So this is very interesting. You know, he's a very, very wealthy man, but he says that he doesn't, he, he shares the wealth with the kids. He, they don't hold back. You know, they, they give the kids pretty much what they want. And this is one thing where it's, you know, in my opinion, um, you know, I always had to work for whatever I had in my childhood. I was not given money. I was definitely not given like a, whatever, uh, trust or whatever you, he probably sets up for his kids. So I think there's a lot to learn from, um, from the, from this style of parenting. But again, this is a kind of, a, like I said, this is all things that you can test out in your own ways. You can go, okay, how, how is he raise his kids? How does he think about this? Why does he think about this? And you can kind of hear about that in interviews, but uh, his kids are very successful. So it's, I think it's, it's not just this in a vacuum. Really what he adds to this is he teaches his kids about money at the table. So a lot of families, you know, you're sitting at the dinner table and somebody brings up how much does this cost? Or this, like, maybe the kid is like curious about money or investing and the parents go, no, no, we don't talk about that. Who's gonna talk to him about it? That's my question. The school's not gonna talk to him about it. You have to educate the kids. That's why I think financial education, especially investment education is so, so vital um, at a young age is key. So. He doesn't just, if you were just looking at it from the aspect of, um, you know, he's, he's giving his kids this, he's sharing his wealth with his kids. Some people don't believe in this. Some people believe that, you know, you should just give it all away to charity and, you know, have your kids kind of grind. There's, it's kind of a polarizing topic, but at the end of the day, again, you kind of have to uh, pick up kind of what, what you would like from this, this man, Stanley F. Druckenmiller, and then leave the rest. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Um, I apologize if it was a little unstructured. I, I don't really use, um, what do you call them? Like, uh, like a prompt or I don't really have any formal structure to these videos. It's more of a sit down style video, but I'm always open to criticism. I'm open to, uh, you know, improving this as I go along with the series, but kicking it off with Stanley F. Druckenmiller, I'm happy to do a part two on this guy, but this is just really an introduction to him focusing mainly on bonds. He's, you know, like I said, in his career over the past 120 quarters, he's only been unprofitable in five, which is pretty much unheard of. Um, he's really focused on this uh, capital markets and everything investing. So anyways, that was Stanley F. Druckenmiller. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments, like, subscribe button all, like, subscribe button all, invest global, and until next time.